Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for this episode 9 here on Bloomfield with me, Farmer Murphy. Well I've jumped a time ahead again. We are at August 1st and that means we have some products to sell. Um, so we're going to be starting this episode I think like the last couple uh, by doing that. Which is actually not a bad thing because that's bringing us money in. And uh, these ones are going to go down to Ben again. A couple reasons. Um, we do need to fulfill that contract to Crawford Farms, but we have sugar again. And the, he's not interested in the sugar, just the potato products. And two, Ben had called us and he has something he wants to show us. So we'll take and sell these off uh, with Ben again. And the next lot we'll send on the train to Crawford Farms. So we'll jump in here and we'll head off and I will uh, meet you down there. So we'll see you in a minute. Well, there we go. We've gotten our products offloaded. We've actually received payment for them already. So uh, we got just over $2,000. So that brings us up to 35357 So the old bank account is definitely moving in the right direction. But what Ben wanted to show us is actually around front. So uh, let's mosey around and take a look. And there it is, a 46 Series International from the mid-70s. And this one is fully restored. It also has the turbo kit on it, so it has about 150 horsepower. So that's uh, it makes it a pretty serious piece of equipment. It does look really nice. Now Ben understood our situation and we're trying to farm with that farm all and when this came in a few days ago he stuck it away until we could come down and have a look because he thought it might be a good fit for our farm and uh, I can't argue with him there it is pretty nice a pretty significant uh, horsepower upgrade and uh, also uh, modernization even though this one is from the 70s hard to believe it's more modern by quite a bit than what we're currently using Let's jump in and take a look at the cab. Well, as you can see, it has that same wide panoramic cab that our farm all currently has. So there's been not much upgrade here in the last 20 plus years. <laughs> but it is pretty nice in here as well. It is nice. He said we could start it up, so let's give that a go. Oh yeah. Does sound nice too. So fair market value on this is uh, Ben said about thirty five thousand. He said he let us have it for thirty three. Uh, it is tempting, I have to admit, but at thirty three thousand, man, it would just about wipe us right out. So I have to give that some thought. So he said we could think about it and. Uh, he does know the TFS would snap this up in a heartbeat, so uh, he's given us till tomorrow to, to make a decision. But I noticed another tractor when we were offloading. It's sitting back here, and I asked him about this as well. And he got this tractor on trade just yesterday. Um, it is a 90s vintage John Deere. Uh, not as much horsepower as the International. It's about uh, 100 horsepower, or just slightly over. Says he hasn't taken a look at it at all. Um, the farmer did declare that there is a pretty good hydraulic leak uh, on it someplace. Uh, but that was the only issue he was aware of. And Ben said it did, did run, seemed to run pretty good when they, when they offloaded it. But... Uh, like he said, he hasn't hasn't run us through the shop and obviously hasn't cleaned it up. If we jump in here and take a look. Um, not as uh, panoramic a view a cab. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty nice, but obviously from the look of it, you can see it's a, it's a more modern tractor than the International yet again. Like I said, from the mid to late 90s, this one. 
you can see from the seat it's definitely been well used now the tractor alone um you know in good condition it would be somewhere in the you know 25 to 30 thousand dollar range and then of course it's got the front loader and bucket on it so i really pushed ben on it to give me a price um what he'd sell it for as it sits just as it is he doesn't touch it and he said he'd let us have this for twenty seven thousand dollars and that would include the famous tail light warranty <laughs> basically we've discussed this before as soon as you can't see the tail lights anymore it's out of warranty so he said he let us have it for that 27 as it sits and he doesn't touch it so got some thinking to do so i'm going to go home discuss this with the missus um i do like the cabin do like the the bucket but there is a risk uh, you know kind of buyer beware so uh, that versus the uh, international which is in tip-top shape more horsepower but uh again that uh, panoramic cab so got to do some thinking on it have to get ben back to ben tomorrow regarding the international for sure so i will head back talk to the missus and i'll bring you back in tomorrow and uh we'll see where we go from here so we'll see you then well it is late the following day and as you can see from our bank account a decision was made but before we get into that there was another interesting development this morning i got a call from neil and uh, he needs some help he's got some grass that's ready to be cut and normally he just cuts the grass and bales it up as grass and any excess that he has he sells off to uh, sims but sims has just done a large grass cut of his own and his dryer is full and can't take any more grass but he told neil that he could take hay and he would pay the hay price that's all well and good except that neil doesn't have a tether uh, to make hay but he noticed on the little tour he did up here that we did so he said if he could use the tether and in fact if we would come down and ted for him because this weekend he needs to go away to a wedding um, that he would give us a 15 percent of the uh, proceeds of the sale and he said we could use his old uh massey to do it well i told him about our impending uh, purchase and he said well if we wanted to use our own equipment then then he could uh see giving us 20 percent so that's kind of what the plan is 15 percent if we have to use his tractor and 20 percent if we use ours uh and like i said he would like to have us ted it while he has gone uh, to the wedding and then uh, when he gets back from that after the weekend he will uh, uh bail it up and sell it off and share the results with us so thought that was a pretty good deal so that actually helped us make our decision so let's go out and see what the decision was and as you can see already we went with the john deere uh, we paid twenty seven thousand for it as it was um, so you can see it's in the same state that we saw it down at the shop the wife and i actually went down and had a look and we discussed it and we thought even though this was a bit riskier a move um, that overall it would uh, be of uh, a bigger benefit to the farm uh, primarily because of the front loader we could really use that and of course the cab here in alberta is also another huge benefit but we've got the risk it's kind of like a buyer beware situation i did park it outside earlier today and you can see it is leaking a fair bit of fluid onto the ground so we do need to get that looked after whether i can get it fixed in time to uh, look after neil's hay with it uh, remains to be seen but the first thing i think we can do today is we can take and uh, wash it off and uh, see what we've got underneath all that dirt and it'll help us uh, to do the repairs and then I'll put a mat down on the shop floor and we'll get her into the shop. So stand by, I'll get the washer set up and we'll get this thing washed off. 
Well, there we go. I got the shop door open and I've drug the pressure washer hose out here. Let's see what we've got under all this dirt here. Now, at $27,000, we're basically paying uh, pretty much market value for the tractor if it's in good shape. And we're getting the front loader and the and the bucket for nothing and that's that's worth well more than ten thousand dollars so we can afford to put a few thousand in here and still be well ahead of the game let's get around here to the other side and make sure we get this area here washed good because this is where the problem area is There, I think that's looking pretty good. I'll get this put away and uh, I'll catch up with you in just a minute. Well there, I've got the tractor moved into the shop. I put some uh, plastic down on the floor to protect the shop floor. I've got to uh, clean up this out here. But uh, I also bought a set of pallet forks uh, to go with the front loader. And I've actually got those tucked in just in behind here. So that means uh, we can sell this off. So I put this on Kijiji, uh, asking almost $800. It's all set here, ready to go for the new new owner. So we can sell those away. We won't have to deal with those anymore. But that, all in all, was a pretty pretty good day. Uh, the tractor did run good on the way here, like I said, other than spraying oil. So uh, I think we'll call it a day there. And I'll take a good look at it tomorrow and see what we can determine. So I'll catch up with you then. Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the farm. I have made some progress here. Um, found a couple leaks, actually. Uh, one of these fittings here on the bucket side was actually loose. I tightened it up. It's still weeping a little bit, so I've ordered a new fitting for that. The good news is if we disconnect the bucket, uh, of course, uh, that won't be an issue. So uh, that's not a bad deal. Uh, the other one, though, was is a bit more pro problematic. It's down here. You can see there's kind of a, a clamp that these hoses are going through, and it actually rubbed through on one of these hoses, and there's a small pinhole. So uh, I, I called Ben. He doesn't have one of those houses in stock, but he can get one in a couple days. So I've ordered that up. But in the meantime, what I've done is I took uh, a piece of old uh, hydraulic hose, high pressured hydraulic hose, and used some heavy duty uh, hose clamps and clamped over that area uh, to patch it up. Now, obviously it doesn't patch the leak uh, completely it still leaks but it's not uh, spraying out of there and it's not a long-term solution but uh, I think for the short term uh, it'll work so but we have a job that we can do with this tractor now like I said it still leaks a little bit but it's not spraying out so I think we're okay to use it and I did clean up the oil patch here and threw some fresh gravel down but we need to throw some manure in our greenhouse it's just about out so i'm going to go and hook onto our trailer and we'll take our new tractor down to tfs's place and get some manure so i'll catch up with you down at his place well we made it down to tfs's uh, safe and sound and one thing you might notice is we don't need to use the drawbar with this trailer uh, and this tractor so it's a uh, an additional nice little bonus and look what's tucked in over here <laughs> surprise surprise you know and I got thinking didn't matter if we bought it or if TFS bought it uh, it's our money has probably been used either way <laughs> actually I don't we haven't given TFS enough money to buy that but uh, we are going to give them three hundred dollars more I hope this bucket here holds 1,500 liters versus uh, the skid steer bucket. Uh, although, you know what? I think it might have held two now that I think about it. But anyways, I'm hoping to get two bucket loads in here, so 3,000 liters. So let's give her a go and see what happens.
you know what I might try and do this in cab seeing as we actually have a cab <laughs> why don't we give it a try see how it goes Yep, there we go. 1,500 liters, just a hair over. I don't know what our trailer holds, but we're about to find out if it'll hold uh, 3,000 liters anyway. If it doesn't, we'll probably have a mess on the ground to clean up. This is where it's hard to judge when you're in cab. Are you going... Oops. That wasn't... Uh, wasn't the best, shall we say. But it's hard to judge that distance. This is only the uh, second time since we've, that we've had to fill up the manure, so it lasts quite a while. And I, I'm pretty sure we only took one bucket load last time, if, if memory serves, so... Whether it's 1,000 or 2,000, you know what I think about it, I think it was 2,000 liters. Well, it'll give us an extra 1,000. There we go. Nice. Held it no problem at all. Now, I think I'll leave you guys in for the trip home because uh, Murphy's Law says, you know, you're not going to uh, have any issues on the way down when you're running back uh, full and loaded with manure on top of that you probably break down within sight of your house <laughs> so oh man i didn't do that very good job on that but close enough all right let's head home and see if we get there although admittedly this isn't much of a load for this tractor but it's the first time we've put any kind of load on it so Oh, it looks like this is only 67% full. I wonder if that's a, the trailer or is it counting the bucket too? Not sure. Definitely have more capacity anyway. Um, so after we give TFS his 300 bucks for his manure, we will... Uh, oh no, it was $50 per thousand, wasn't it? So it's only $150. Oh, so... After we give him his $150, we'll be at $68.50 then. So that's all right. Yeah, so it was $100 for the... It was a 2,000 liter bucket. There we go. We got it all figured out. Now I should mention, while I had the tractor in the shop, I did all the standard maintenance stuff to it. Changed the oil, fuel filter, air filters, greased it up, all that kind of good stuff. So we should be good to go uh, in a couple days to do that tedding for Neil, as long as our uh, hydraulic patch holds. Like I said, we'll take the bucket off. We don't need it for, th for that job. And uh, so we won't have that leak to worry about. I'll just make sure the fluid's topped up. I did check our patch, and like I said, it still leaks, but it's a drip leak instead of a spray. So, so far, so good. Still not the speediest tractor in the world, but much faster than the farm all, so we'll take it. All the way around, the big upgrade. And I actually don't mind, uh, or don't miss picking the bugs out of my teeth either, so cab is pretty nice. I'm sure really appreciate it when we're doing dusty work or when it's cold out. Well, by gosh, it looks like we're going to make our home.
it'd be darn disappointing if it's if it uh <laughs> stopped now but no it does seem to run pretty good hopefully we just have that uh hydraulic issue and once that's fixed we'll have a reliable little tractor that we can use for some time And I know the wife, uh, she approves. It meets her definition of a tractor. The farm all never quite did. <laughs> all right, well, I'll get this unloaded and I'll take the bucket off and we shall catch up with you guys in a couple days when we're ready to do that tedding at Neil's place. So we'll see you then. Good morning and welcome back to the farm. Um, as you can see, I did advance the time to the 5th. Uh, this is the day that uh, we were scheduled to go and tend that grass for Neil. And he did call this morning. Uh, he has left to attend his uh, wedding event, but he let us know he did finish the grass uh, cutting and it is ready for us to tend. Um, our money has gone up and that's thanks to a couple things. We did manage to sell that pallet fork for what was 750 we got for that. And of course uh, the wife's income kicked in. And so we are at 700, eh, sorry, 700, 7,779. Yeah. And uh, we did send the money off to TFS for the manure. So for this little tedding job, we're going to take the John Deere. I did check the hydraulic fluid and with the bucket on and uh, we lost very little fluid so we don't need the bucket obviously for the tinning so we should uh, be okay as long as our uh, farmer patch holds but uh, we're not very far away from Neil's place and uh, but let's face it <laughs> we could use a farm all but the John Deere is a whole lot more comfortable so we'll grab our tether here now I did call Ben about that hose and fitting uh, he does have the fitting but not the hose he figures he'll have it tomorrow <laughs> which of course Murphy's Law uh, we don't need it tomorrow well we do need it <laughs> tomorrow but sure would have been nice to have it today but that's the way she goes anyways I'm gonna head down to Neil's and I will catch up with you at his place so we'll see you there well we've arrived here at Neil's um, he does have all his uh, grass mode as you can see so there's no point in delaying we might as well get right after it it is kind of too bad to, uh, he's got it all nicely wind road here and after we're done tending it uh, he's going to have to go and uh, rake it up again That's what I call an SEP, <laughs> someone else's problem. like he's got a crop in there so we better not run over that
Old John Deere looks pretty good in the field. nothing in this field so we're safe to run in there. Now this is one of those jobs that uh, actually it's uh, pretty easy to do from in camp. So let's uh, take a look at that. This is actually going to make pretty short work of this. This isn't going to take us very long at all, really. Pretty easy work for, what was it, 20%? I think that was a pretty good deal. We do have to wait for uh, Neil to get back, though, and get this uh, raked back up and then bailed and sold. But not a big deal. This old John Deere's got a pretty nice turning radius on it. Of course, <laughs> old is relative. It's pretty new uh, compared to the Farmo. And we'll still use the Farmo, like uh, for our potato harvest, we can actually, we'll need to use both tractors, one for harvesting and one for carting. Well, you can uh, see how this is going to go. I won't uh, bore you with any more of this. Um, I will get this tedded out and I'll catch up with you at that point. So we'll see you in a little bit. Well, this row here will finish up this job. So that didn't take too long at all. What is it? It's just before 11 o'clock in the morning here. John Deere worked flawlessly. And I did stop and check the hydraulic fluid part way through. It's just fine. I mean, it is still leaking slightly, but uh, we should have our new hose tomorrow and be able to fix that up. Well, there we go. And that brings us to the end of this job and also to the end of this episode. So if you're still with me, I really appreciate you watching. If you found it entertaining or informative anyway, 
I encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button and also feel free to comment if you wish and if you want to see when other content like this lands hit that old notification bell but until next time this is Farmer Murphy signing off.